Bars of Council, led by the President. Allow me to call you President, because for many times you said, because of the regulations you you missed. I've, we've got Ronald Mutumba, Professor Rora, Engineer Serunjoji, and uh, this one is the one who started it in the morning. He said he's a past leader, uh, our ninth president, Constant Mayende. Also, allow me to recognize officials from the central government. Secretaries of the Institute, past and present, the conference speakers, dear CPAs and participants, members of the press, and local leaders. We normally, we've now developed a custom of ROC one chairman addressing the people, but he gave me authority to address you on his behalf. You are welcome to the, this ROC one whose name I, I'm yet to get to know, but you are welcome. The ROC chairman has allowed me to welcome you on his behalf. Now, I want to hand you over to the session chairperson. This chairperson has, is a man of many talents. There's one which I just learned a few minutes ago, that for about uh, 20 years has been the company secretary of a company called Sleeping Beauty. Hmm? Yeah, so by having the company secretary of Sleeping Beauty doesn't give you permission at all to go into the, the act of sleeping. This gentleman, he has also confessed that he, he forgot his glasses in the hotel room and they are foreseeing. And he has asked me to ask for your permission that if he bumps into you, especially if, if you're a lady, it's because he's not seeing clearly. Doesn't have his glasses with him. Uh, this gentleman is a happily married man with four children, but still he somehow passes for a lady's man. Uh, he's uh, our own council member, CPA David Timothy Ediom. Now, before CPA De David Ediom comes, let us dedicate ourselves to the maker, to the creator. We are going to have, please, uh, CPA Lynette, stand up before I say what I'm going to say. We are going to have a very powerful prayer. I think you can see the person going to deliver the, the prayer. Uh, this uh, CPA Lynette was the first manager of the CPA Sako. Yeah. After which he went into the Ministry of Finance. And the Ministry of Finance saw the talent in her and assigned her to our embassy in DRC, where she left without blemish. The witness is here, the Auditor General is here. And uh, another Auditor General is here. She served with distinction. And therefore, I can assure you that the prayer is, she's going to give will reach God without any blemish. So, CPA Lynette, come after the prayer, CPA Edion, please just take over from her. She's so powerful that I'm even trembling, just standing next to her. Thank you. Good evening, all protocol observed. Uh, please stand up and we humble ourselves for our prayer. Almighty God and Father, we thank you so much for today. We thank you so much, Lord Father, for our lives. 
We thank you so much for the uh, positions that you've given us to serve your nation, Uganda, and to serve the people, Lord Father. We thank you so much for this conference, and we dedicate it into your mighty hands that whatever we shall discuss may be for the betterment of the government, may be for the betterment of our workplaces, and for the CPA fraternity in totality. We thank you so much for everything that you've done for us. For those on the way, Lord Father, we pray that you give them journey mercies as they come to join us, Lord Father. We thank you for each and everything that has been um, laid before you and laid uh, for this conference. We pray all this, believing and trusting your mighty and glorious name. Thank you for the powerful prayer. You know when the weather is so hot, some things evaporate. We are supposed to praise our country and our region before we go into business. And uh, I would request that all of you stand up as we follow the lyrics of the national anthems, national and regional. So DJ, please. Uh,
President, we apologize. I, I did sing there from Vue uh, silently. We apologize, we don't have it, the lyrics, and we feared uh, people. Timothy, I'm, I'm buying time for you to be here. And uh, whenever we, we sing the national anthems, I will ask the camera people to come, some of them to come here, because you people make an am amazing choir. I saw one who held his heart, hand to his heart with the East African anthem, but not the national anthem. And then I saw others sing the English lyrics of the East African anthem. So you are an amazing choir, you people. Uh, thank you, David, for the kind introduction. And I'll stand on the previous protocols. But let me also recognize one of our first presidents in the house, CPA George Gadu. You're most welcome. I know that should have been with our MC, but I thought I would just uh, take note of that. I would now like to Derek, you're confusing me. We go with the previous or the... Or the emergency program. Okay. Uh, members, you're welcome to Busoga for our second PFM conference. The heat has been amazing. I'm sure after this conference, we are all going to be at least uh, two kilos less if we don't double, double the efforts in the dining. But seeing as it is, Dr. Kasenene is not here. I'm sure we shall eat as we wish. This issue of colors on the plate can go and rest. Uh, let me take this opportunity to invite our CEO and our acting president to join me on the podium. Yeah, a little housekeeping. Yeah, we are now ready to start. 
Uh, I would also like to invite uh, our PAFA president, Madam Keto Kayemba, to join us on the, on the stage. Clap for our president of Africa, the first lady, the first Ugandan. Yeah, please. Uh, now that we are assembled, I believe we all know our CEO and Secretary, CPA Derek Kaja, please uh, come and make your opening remarks. Uh, thank you, Director of Ceremonies. I'll stand on the protocol that was established, and I greet you all in the name of our Lord, who gives us life to do all what is possible. I welcome you to the source of the Nile Hotel in Ginger City, and I thank you for choosing uh, rightly to join us for the PFM conference, the second of its kind, the first outside uh, Kampala city or central region. I'll start by the last things, which also the, mas the director uh, of the program talked about, that when you are here, please vi visit, because we are told that Jinja is a uh, the city for tourism. So let's use the opportunity to see what is around us. Uh, our second PFM conference uh, is hinged on the fact that uh, public finance management is around us. Each one of us is part of public finance management, whether you like it or not. Anyone who pays taxes, you are a candidate for PFM, and all those who disburse uh, money or who review activities within the PFM setup, you are part of the PFM. And it's on that premise that we conduct this conference. Allow me to welcome our keynote speaker, uh, Professor Vicent Ivajire. You are very welcome. Yes. <coughs> As I welcome you, I want to remind ourselves we are the Institute of Certified Public Accountants of Uganda. And when I say we are, I refer to all members. Uh, the Secretariat is not the Institute. The building is not the Institute. It's us, the members, who are the Institute. So I rightly say we are the Institute of Certified Public Accountants of Uganda, gathered today for our second Public Finance Management Conference. And our duty is to operate in public interest. So as we gather even and we deliberate on issues that affect or drive performance for public finance management for enhanced service delivery, let's remember our call that we operate in public interest. I want also to interest every uh, accountant in the house and aspiring accountants, that we have regional members' networks, and uh, they are undergoing uh, a process of electing their members. Please, if you are not attached to any regional grouping, uh, log into your account and select one. There are 12 regions across the country, and the Constitution allows you to belong to at least two one where you hail from and another one where you operate or where you work. Uh, we want to take accountancy to every corner of the country because empirically it has been proven that the vibrance of the profession drives the vibrancy of the economy. 
and we must play within our national economic development and that's part of also our role. I would also like to remind ourselves that we have the Benoverent Fund uh, for times of need. It is in baby steps and our trustees, uh, one of our trustees is our first president, uh, CPA, uh, George Egadu, and is with us. So let's make sure that we join our hands and we come together as a family and create a benevolent fund that can come up in times of need and times uh, to support ourselves. As I wind down our, my welcome remarks, I want to remind ourselves that as their profession, we create impact. And that's uh, the slogan we are using right now. We have seen and it is empirically proven that everywhere where there is a professional accountant rightly executing duties, there is positive impact. So let us avoid the negative impacts. But let's have the positive impact driven across our businesses, our sphere of life, our economy, to ensure that we build a future for our future generations. A future that will be enticing, that your children and our grandchildren will not run away from Uganda to look for another country, but they will be happy to be in the pearl of Africa. As I close, I'd like to thank our, uh, the Ministry of Finance, Planning and Economic Development uh, for supporting uh, Public Finance Management Conference. I'll also thank Kesweya and Bekatili for always coming up to support whenever we call upon them uh, to ensure that this conference goes on smoothly and members can enjoy uh, for the good of the profession, for the good of our country, and uh, we drive our economic growth. I wish you nice deliberations, and thank you for listening to me. Uh, thank you, uh, Derek. Uh, better clap, uh, we just, we've just had lunch. Thank you for those remarks. Uh, I would now like to invite our vice president. He's very specific about how you pronounce his surname. So let me just stop at CPA Ronald. And to introduce him, let me read the book. Because our personal stories uh, might not be for the interest of this audience. Yeah, CPA Ronald uh, is Vice President of the Institute and Chairperson of Member Services. He's the one who has failed some of you becoming members. <laughs> He's also Managing Partner at uh, Mutumba Mukobe and Associates. And he's, he's a member of the ICPAU Editorial Board. He's also very many other things. He has sent uh, a woman to the labor ward many times. I'm not going to say we don't count children in Africa. Mr. Vice President, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Come and make your opening remarks. Thank you. Thank you, Timothy. Uh, some of the allegations, we shall deal with those at a later time. Uh, but it's an opportunity to re-emphasize, at least when we are home, the name should be pronounced correctly. It is Mutumba, not Mutumba. Um, I stand on the established protocol. Our keynote speaker, Professor Vincent Bajire, of the Faculty of Graduate St Studies and Research at Macquarie University Business School, our, and I emphasize our PAFA president, TPA Kato Kayemba. Dear participants, a good afternoon to you all. I welcome you to Busoga, home of the Nile, 
and the tourism hub of East Africa. If ngaba soga to sanga irino okuba kchaza kwe ewa ife idinda. We know she gila ntuwa funa site buti. Era mutia maintende. Era murire mirembe. Akasa na kemu funie kuwako karike kubatisa. Enewa ife tuba musama angeno. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm honored to address you this afternoon as we officially open the second public finance management conference organized by the Institute of Certified Public Accountants of Uganda. I bring you greetings from our dear president of the Institute, CPA Joseph Okui Osia, who is unable to join us today. She's currently in South Africa representing us at a professional accountants in business advisory group activities where she will be participating in discussions around the accountant's role in creating an enabling environment to bridging the finance gap in Africa. Therefore, she sends her apologies and she wishes you the very best of deliberations at this conference. Our chief guest, ladies and gentlemen, under the auspices of ICPAU, public sector players are convening for the second year to discuss a subject that concerns every Ugandan PFM. We are all involved in public finance management at one point in the PFM cycle. And ultimately, we share a common goal in the form of quality public goods and services that the national resource envelope should be delivering to us. We need well-equipped hospitals so that we can prevent exorbitant healthcare referral costs. We need good roads that facilitate trade and connectivity. We need well-stocked schools which provide conducive environments for our learners and opportunities for the future and security among other services. Through this PFM conference, we hope to be able to influence national policy development. Prof, the recommendations from this conference are shared with the Minister of Finance planning and economic development for consideration. And I will update us on last year's resolutions a little while later. Our theme. The theme for the second PFM conference is public finance management for enhanced delivery of services, enhanced service delivery. And it underscores the pivotal role that effective public financial management plays in delivering essential services to our communities. It is no secret that many public goods and services in our country are in undesirable states. Revenue shortfalls excavated by the blunt and theft of public funds and wastage of the Miaga resources continue to undermine the efforts towards effective delivery of public goods. However, in spite of these challenges, ladies and gentlemen, we must recognize the efforts of the government towards PFM reform. Uganda has one of the most robust PFM legal frameworks and institutions. You, the Public Finance Management Act of 2015 spells out comprehensive guidelines on fiscal policy, formulation, budget preparation and management, asset and liability management, and accountability and internal controls. I think we can indeed call it the Dictionary of Public Finance Management in Uganda, if we want to. The government has invested massively in technological advancements to enhance transparency of government fiscal processes, and the government is increasingly supporting the professionalization of public sector employees. To the Accountant General, your efforts are not unnoticed. We appreciate government efforts plus those of your team. And through this conference, we hope that together we can share experiences and explore or generate new approaches to support your efforts and address any challenges. Resolutions from the previous PFM conference, which was the first conference. Ladies and gentlemen, audit remains a critical aspect of PFM. And to achieve effective public financial management, the independence of the audit institution must be preserved and the authorities must address the issues raised in the Auditor General's report. I must commend the Office of the Auditor General for its diligence in exposing the gaps that need attention in public finance management. When we met at the inaugural PFM conference, 
last year, 2023, we made some recommendations in line with external audits. We emphasize the need for the institutions to implement the Auditor General's report to the letter. We are happy that increasingly institutions are paying attention to the Auditor General's reports. Notably, following the recent release of the Auditor General's report of the Public Service Payroll Audit, unverified personnel have been advised by the relevant institutions to seek redress from the Ministry of Public Service. We need many more such responses to the issues that are raised in pre-audit reports. What's the role of ICPA in supporting PFM? On our part as an institute, we continue to encourage the adoption of the international public sector accounting standards. The standards emphasize a number of disclosures which are critical in enhancing transparency in public sector financial reporting. The issue of comparability of government accounts among the central and the local governments can also be addressed if the standards are applied. Through the Public Sector Working Group and the Financial Reporting Awards, we shall continue to provide guidance regarding the implementation of the standards. In collaboration with the Office of the Auditor General and the Ugandan SIIs, our focus is to enhance audit skills, improve and support audits to produce quality reports, and enhance audit effectiveness within the public sector through the continuing professional development program and specialized training for performance audits. Professor, I am pleased to report to you that accountants in the public sector are very active participants of the ICPAU continuous education program. Appreciation to partners. As I conclude, I would like to use this opportunity to extend a vote of appreciation to the Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development, Kesweya Africa, Baker Tilly HEM, and as well as other partners for all the financial and technical support rendered to the Institute for the success of this year's PFM conference. I also applaud the participants of the second PFM conference, both present here physically and those online, for your commitment to continuous learning. Let us seize this opportunity presented by this conference to reaffirm our commitment to public finance management for enhanced service delivery by generating alternative thoughts, views or efforts towards the development of excellent PFM services. As accountants, we are reminded of our roles, not only as stewards of financial resources, but also as guardians of public trust and advocates for accountability and transparent, transparency. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, you're most welcome to this year's second PFM conference. Thank you very much. I have, I have not introduced you. Ladies and gentlemen, permit me to perform a brief but very important task. It is now my honor to invite our keynote speaker to address us. Professor Vincent Bajire is the Dean for the Faculty of Graduate Studies and Research at Makere University Business School. He is a professor of strategic management and has been involved in research on theory building in management practice in public NGOs and private enterprises. Professor Bajire is a member of the Academy for, of Management and has served on various committees of the Strategic Management Division. He's a member of the Africa Academy of Management and a fellow of its faculty development program. He worked with various projects and programs of the Uganda Catholic Secretariat as coordinator, finance and administration officer, project manager and trainer. Professor Wajire is a member of the Finance and Administration Committee of the Institute of Corporate Governance of Uganda and is serving on various corporate bodies among them. Uganda Matters University, 
Catholic University of Eastern Africa and Joint Medical Bureau and Lay Apostolate Commission. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming with a round of applause, Professor Vincent Bajiri. <laughs> Professor, you're most welcome. Thank you very much uh, for that humbling introduction and the master of ceremonies, the president and board of ICPAU, the CEO and management, ICPAU fraternity, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen. It's both an honor and a challenge for me to address you this afternoon on your second conference of the public finance management, particularly on the theme of enhanced service delivery. When my good friend Derek called me to give this address, a few, a few no's rang into my mind, but then a few issues rang again to remind me of what my place is in the fraternity of certified public accountants. You have heard in the introduction that uh, I sit on the board on the Council of Uganda Matters University and recently ICPAU, which sponsors, which forwards the person who chairs the finance committee, uh, the term of office ended, and in the interim, around the committee, they said, who is from accounting background here? And the council asked me to chair the committee, the finance committee. So I'm the chair of the finance committee of Uganda Matters University, as we wait for CPA, who is coming to take over. I also sit on the, on the council of the Catholic University of Eastern Africa, which is a regional university by the Catholic bishops of Eastern Central Africa. And again, when we were sharing duties, I was at first the vice chair, and then later the person who chairs, who chaired by that time, a professor of accounting from Tanzania, her term ended, and then we got another one, they said this one is going to chair audit, then they said among us, because most of the council members are bishops, they said among us, Vincent, you are the one with the finance and accounting background, you are business professional. So I'm also chairing the finance and planning committee of that university. You see the problems I have. But I also remembered deep into uh, the beginning of my career as an academic, my first subject to teach was financial accounting. That's the first subject I taught, 1996, when I somehow, after working as an accountant and finance administration at the Uganda Catholic Secretariat, my mind went into academics. The first subject was financial accounting. And I used to enjoy to teach it because students were listening, because that was uh, an issue that students would begin. And I was teaching the, the diploma in uh, accountancy, so I'm sure there are many CPAs whose first stage, whose first uh, brick is my, my teaching. But I have since then uh, been on the other side of management as a professional in management now. Given that uh, kind of exciting uh, memory, I told uh, uh, my brother Derek that let me check my diary and I will be able to make it and I'm happy that I'm here. Uh, three words which are key for me in this uh, theme, I tried to disintegrate them. The word, public, uh, the word public finance and uh, management and then service delivery. As I was driving here, I was actually looking at uh, service delivery, especially public service delivery, and wondering whether I would have a service delivery by security agencies that you are driving too fast, because they can give very good public service if you are driving fast. And on the Kayunga Road, there are many trailers of sugar cane. So before uh, overtaking them, I would first wonder whether I'll get a service delivery of overdriving. 
So I was very careful on that. And of course, I was taking note of the roads. I was taking note of the children coming out of school and seeing how they were looking like. So I was studying as a student as I was coming to talk about this very important theme of enhanced service delivery. And therefore, in addressing you today, uh, last week I was in, a, in one in Netherlands uh, on a study exchange program, and having seen many things, we were quarreling amongst ourselves, the team uh, which was there, about 24 from different universities in Uganda. And we were saying, what happened with Uganda? Why, you know, service delivery? When we were seeing how trains were moving, we were seeing the roads, we were seeing this and this, we said what we were saying, but you are not the first to benchmark. Hundreds of us here in Uganda have gone to, be, to benchmark to see how things are done, but when you come back, things are different. So I, in one of the evenings, I, I jotted down uh, a blog, a short uh, write-up, and it is entitled, Let's Go for a Retreat at UDLS. So as I was uh, preparing this paper, the, the person who is in charge of MOBS social media uh, sent me a message that I have released your blog. It is entitled, Let's Go for a Retreat to at UDLS, the Uganda Drivers Licensing uh, System. So it's a blog. It was released yesterday. I'm sure it will go on social media, and I will share, I'll be happy to share it with Derek, and then he can send it to you. In a nutshell, I was comparing the service delivery at uh, UDLS as a bit of unique and I was giving a personal experience about two months ago when, and even uh, three years ago, when I walked in there and uh, having done everything online, in a few moments, your driver's license is, uh, is released. I'm sure many of you have experienced that. So in this particular experience that I'm writing about, I went there very early in the morning, it was raining. And so I said, let me first go to town. So I drove in the morning. And when I got there, it was heavy rain that morning. And as you know, when it rains in Uganda, many offices are closed or they delay to open. So my mind was, let me just go there, wait. I'm sure they will be late. Then when I reached that around the railways there, I just parked quickly there. And then as a car from the neighboring building came rushing to tell me, don't park there. But I knew I had nowhere to park, so I, I just left the car and went inside. But right from the Asikari who was, who was wet, the man was wet, but he was coming us. Go there, I'm sorry these chairs are wet. We are sorry it is flooded here. There was a lot of flooding. So he guided me through the flood, a bit of a line there. He said, just hold on. Let me ask if they have started. Dear friends, in a couple of minutes, my picture had been taken, the buyers mentioned it, sign here, sign there, and I had my driver's license. And I was, to, I was out of the building. By chance, the asikari who had tried to stop me to park from somewhere, the rain had, had mistreated him and he was not there. I thought I would find when he had closed the car, but he had, he had gone away. But inside UDLS, the service delivery was different. So I wrote this blog that let's go for a retreat at UDLS. So when I was preparing this view lines, I said, ah, this blog has, come, blog has come out in time, and I will share, and many of you will feel the experience if you have gone to that, to that place. Service delivery has been a critical issue in this country, right from the communities up to the national level. And we have uh, empirical facts academic, from academic research, from journalists who write, showing the contentious nature of how delivery of services is done. And the public, of whom I'm humbly part, seem to feel that the government's priorities are not known. We seem, in academic, uh, until I have facts, I cannot say the government priorities are not known. But government priorities seem not to be known from a member of the public, myself. And I think many Ugandans are yearning for more. Many Ugandans are yearning for better. 
The expected service delivery contract is with the public. And I'm happy uh, the CEO mentioned that uh, certified public accountants work for the public good. And surprisingly, if you move around many Ugandans, we shall be feeling that service delivery is wanting. But we are part of the service delivery. That is what disturbs me. As I look at the other service deliveries where I'm saying the hospital, the roads, whatever, but I also sit in an office where Ugandans come to get various services. And yesterday, uh, one of the students sent on their, on their platform a kind of write-up, you know, they were sharing. And he was, he was disgruntled on some few things in our service deliverers' moves. And finally, down he said, even, well, even Dean Bagire cannot help it. And so one of the students forwarded me the post. Even Dean Bagire cannot help it. But when I tried to internalize, he was calling about to delayed. One time, in one aspect, he, says the, he said the exam was late by a few minutes. By 2 o'clock, we were seated there. The exam was not ready. Another one, he said the room was hot. They sit in a room that is hot, and we cannot deliver funds. And some other things. And finally, he says, even he didn't bagire cannot what? Cannot help it. Indeed, I cannot help it. But what is important is the second word that I have pulled out of your theme, the word management. I'm a student of management, and that has been my specialization for years. And I've taught management for the last 25 or so years at university. And so I might be part of the problem or part of the solutions. But for my, all my former students, I don't end the class without asking them to be my disciples of good management. So whoever has gone through my hand possibly is a good disciple of good management. And what are the issues in this case? The issue is service delivery can be seen, it can be felt. Management cannot. And yet, in managing, in quotes, we at times mismanage. And so, the service delivery that is tangible in many aspects is lost in the way we manage. I have mentioned many times, and I repeat myself today, that my worry is that many of us are part of the blame game of poor management in this country. In very many small things. One time, my MBA class, having taught them management, uh, it was a public holiday, and so they came to revise in preparation for the exams. When they reached the gate, the sky closed them. We said, no, today is a public holiday. We are not supposed to be here. The students said, but we are students. We can't even put our IDs here. We are students who have come to revise. Today is a public holiday. This is our chance. The sky said, no. So one of the students called me and said, ah, yes, prof. There is poor management here. I said, what's up? He said, the sky cannot open for us. I said, give me a few minutes. By a structure, I did not call the Ascari, I called the head security. The head security called the one in charge of uh, Mubz Annex Gorovi. And the one in uh, charge called the Ascari and said, those are our students. Uh, prof says they have an exam coming, so allow them to, to enter. In about seven minutes, the student called me and they put me in loud. They said, yes, there is good management here. Yes. So there had been good management, but I was in the village. What did I do? Just say call. And what did the call do? It, ra it raised many other calls. And in a few minutes, the gate was what? Was open. In quotes, how many gates in Uganda are closed and the people are waiting outside? How many gates are closed? Surprisingly, as you come even for this conference, five days here, many gates are going to be closed. And many Ugandans are going to wait outside. That is the word management. Intangible, but very powerful. And so we are talking about public finance, 
management. And so what is contained in that management? I use the analogy of the human body. All of us could have done some biology where we're told about the human system, a blood system, digestive system, respiratory system. I enjoy using it. Because unless those systems work together, the subsystems and the parts will never deliver. So there must be whoever created that system made some needs here and there that all of them will do some bit and some delivery is done. If the food finds its way to the respiratory system, definitely in a few minutes someone is coughing and choking. But we are told that when we eat, whether you eat cassava with potatoes, you eat rice and whatever, each of those will find its enzyme that works on it. And if you mix them badly and the enzymes start crisscrossing each other in order to go and do their work, then you have an upset stomach. So an upset stomach is a result of crisscrossing of enzymes, very active, each one of them going to do its what? Its job. How many organizations in Uganda are having upset stomachs? These are questions to ponder over. And we are told that it is a certain place called the ileum that we are told they are like finger-like, where the blood system and the digestive system interact. And whatever has been filtered enters the bloodstream. And then you can sing, you can jump, you can talk, because the blood has nutrients. How many ideums in our Ugandan system are lacking the finger-like? What used to be finger-like are now watered down. And so the ideum is not working in many of our organizations. And the after the idiom has taken, another system takes out the remaining. And if that remaining does not go out, the body is still not fine. How many organizations in Uganda are choked that the other system is not working? These are questions I'm putting before you on the word management. The last word I picked from this, as I said, the first one was service delivery which you can see, you can feel. The other word is management from our theme. And the other word was the public finance. It takes non-accountants trouble to understand the difference between finance and money. But I'm talking to the converted, so it is very easy for me. When you talk about public finance in the public interest, where you are custodians, all sub-custodians, all related to that, and we put on the management and service delivery, then to me comes a simple word, ecosystem. The public service delivery is an ecosystem. It involves many, many things. And so a few of the take-homes I will give is simply because it is an ecosystem. There is a lot of connectedness. And one word that I still pick from management that I seem to feel is stifling us in this country is functional interfaces. Functional interfaces. How do the functions interface? Once again, how does the ileum interface with the vein? How does the vein interface with an artery? I'm using words that we studied in small classes, but I make management out of them. Because we are told the vein carries oxygenated blood. The artery deoxygenated or vice versa. But the two must interface for one to give the lily. All right? And when we are being taught uh, some little athletics, our headmaster was the athletics teacher, you tell us that when you stand waiting for the person coming with the button, put your hand behind, the right hand. And the other person coming must put the button in the left hand. So that when you come, the person is coming, 
the button is in the left for you are putting behind your right hand so it is very easy to interface and the other person takes off and that is where my school used to beat all the other primary schools you would see them mixing or trying to put it from this and this it was a simple science interface how does the accounting system in your organization interface with procurement how does the human resource system interface with MIS and others and others as well? That is where the idiom is not working in many of our organizations. That is where the artery and the veins are in conflict in our country. And surprisingly, the people who are supposed to make them work, partly you and me, we have a role to play. I, I usually tell my students when they come, there's they, they, they something that is so critical about me that uh, is demanded. And that thing takes me, I have calculated it, it's less than three seconds. It is just that. That thing, I, I, I practiced it when I was in primary four. Little did I know that that thing can give a degree, that thing can terminate one who study, that thing can please people. In, in P4, 1979, my age mates, remember they, were, they brought us free books from the government of Netherlands, 96 pages, and they were giving them. And you are supposed to go, the teacher gives you. So, because the teacher had given us many, so one of them I practiced the signature. And that kind of thing has remained. How many of us have that kind of thing that people are crying for? And you are not releasing it. How many of you have calculated how long you take to make a signature? That someone has calculated it, kindly and honestly put up your hand. If you have calculated how long you take to give a signature. And all of you sign the documents, right? Yes, some of you sign documents. And I will later beg those of you who sign documents to give money, please sign documents that give movies more money so that I can talk better when I'm, I'm, I'm happier without saying Bagire cannot also not deliver. It's because I cannot deliver. Most likely, one of you has not given the what? That thing. Please calculate how long it takes. And that will raise your conscience that those few seconds can cost a life. Someone can die because you have not released something of three seconds. True or false? True. That is where service delivery should begin from a personal consciousness of what is my role, what is my place. How many people are not happy today because you did not say good morning? Are you aware that some people in your organizations can be happy and work very well because you said good morning? A cleaner. You know, to say good morning. You people, the CEO greeted me very well cleaning. Because you said what? Good morning. Good morning, madam. How, is your how are your children? She will work the whole day. And so, she will deliver the service because you released something that takes you less than three seconds. Please let's have that in the depth of our minds. That is to me the ecosystem I'm talking about. From big things, I don't want to talk to certified public accountants about institutional big things because we know them, but we take them for granted. The ecosystem are these small things. The small things. The, the opener the opener can spoil a party that is worth millions. The high table is all set, everyone is there. But someone forgot a what? An opener for the high table. And you know we have some immorality in our behavior. So the lady who is put on the high table will indicate to the person behind, you know, this is the setting. And they are dressed with millions of, you know, attire. She realizes on the high table there is a, to serve the president, there is no opener. What does she do? She does not walk to go look for it. She signals the person behind. Eh? 
not aware that everyone in the audience is seeing that an open is what? Is missing. That simple signal that is less than a second spoils the party. And some Ugandans are funny. You people, you mean they do all these things without an opener? Ugandans, we are wasteful. You see the car they, are, they have driven. They cannot afford an opener. They could afford an opener, but the simple ecosystem element failed them. I'm happy I'm talking to accountants because one of the values I used to teach them was accountants are very organized people. I hope you are still organized. <laughs> I hope you are still organized. Yes, I used to tell students towards the end of the class when we have finished the course outline that you people you are going to be accountants. Accountants are very what? Organized. During the time when I was an accountant, I remember how 10 shillings would disorganize my day. Because the toy balance has not what? In the class, we used to say the toy balance must always what? Balance. But in the practice, you know what it takes to have it balance. 10 shillings. You just feel the, the thing is not balancing. That is where, dear friends, I want you to look at public service delivery. From the 10 shillings that is fading the trial balance. From the opener that is fading a multi-million party. From the Casimoro thing, you scribble to make people laugh, to make people happy. You have seen some people, the, how they enjoy when you have signed a document that they have been waiting for. What have been the government's initiatives? I need not go through them in two depths, but I picked some three, four, where government has done some things to enable you to do your work, to deliver the service. And one of them, which is around us, but at times we don't take much interest, is the National Development Plan. I'm a student of strategy, as you had. And the NDP3 is our national strategic framework that points to the country, how we shall deal within ourselves, how we shall deal with all the structures, and to deal with our national resources. We have been in the NDP3. Now I know in, uh, the National Planning Authority has started on consultations for NP4. I know some of you might already be in the system. What are the non-actors and actresses to NDP3 which we are ending? What, are they, what, what do we synthesize out of these small things that are in NDP3 that we have not done to enhance service delivery? That document is very rich. And I discovered many of us professionals seem to have taken it for granted. The other day I got to one of my classes and where I said now the assignment you have all of you is to read NDP3. Question 1, 2, 3, all of them must draw from there. One, what models of strategy were used to develop it? Two, where did those strategies come from? I said, but sir, sir. I said, no. Go and read it and understand it. I'm telling you, dear ICPAU, a fraternity that NDP3 provides you one kind of framework for service delivery. The second one we have uh, battled with in this country, which was a good policy of decentralization, taking things to where the service is, is, uh, is required. For once, uh, in 1991, I appreciated the creation of new districts. I had missed that time a very, you know, sacroscant opportunity to fly to Rome as a young Catholic boy and student because I, my home was 82 kilometers from the district quarters. Those who know Bunyoro sub-region, I come from Kivari and the headquarters was in Hoima. So I went there and benched and sat and waited. They closed the gates I'm talking about. And I couldn't get the, adult, at that time they were not uh, RDCs, they were district representatives, they had the word that, uh, district administrators I think, to sign on a form. 
And it required this form because there was uh, the, 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 all the lower ones in my community had signed. But it needed the line where the district administrator, I think that's how they were called, had to sign. District, they are not commissioner yet, district administrators, I don't 1991, yes. Aha, uh -huh. special district administrators, wonderful, thank you, CPA. And uh, I couldn't get the casing. He came and passed, and I followed him to the office. I said, sir, I'm a student from deep there, my, these are my passport forms. The Askari had me by, the Askari can give good service delivery. <laughs> he, he, up to now, I figure out, I said the phones were there and that picture was taken. He had my car trouser to push him out of the SDA's office. Because I was following him, I was arguing. I told him, but I need this. He said, are you aware I can arrest you? I said, I'm aware you can arrest me, but that's not what brought me. I not come to be arrested. And I argued with him. You know, at times you can argue with a person with a gun. And uh, we argued, but my argument did not pay off. The SDA moved out of office, and I did not get the what? The signature, and I lost the opportunity to travel to Rome. Uh, the following year, we formed a student movement in my county and started pushing for service delivery, having a district. And indeed, on March 28th, 1991, we were announced as Kibale District. And they brought us the, our services near to the people. The rest is history, as they say. All right? But this is what I'm showing you, dear friends. That what it required we, for that special district administrator was to peruse through my forms, confirm that the LOC3, the Gombra chief and others have satisfied that I'm born there, and put a thing of three seconds. And they would have given me a new lease of life, but he did not. For reasons up to now, I don't know. But they are, his escort mistreated me, and it has been in my mind. These are the things. So the question I'm posing to us all, dear friends, I'm picking words from my former headmaster of S1, he used to say, for whom is it well? The bad roads in Kampala, for whom is it well? The lack of services in hospitals, in schools, name it, for whom is it well? We shall not answer this, but let's ponder over it. I want to talk about the technology where you have been struggling with the infamous IFMS, which disturbed the implementation and whatever. And in a nutshell, I want to say that they are very good government initiatives. The problem is implementation. So what happens where you can't as you are good at thinking and planning, that one is uh, uh, it may not be written anywhere. In academics, we say it's anecdotal evidence. It is the, people talk about it, that in Uganda we are good at what? At planning, but poor at service delivery. And you and me, as we have already agreed, we are comrades in what? In crime. We are part of the quarrel wars, if that word exists. We are also part of those who are supposed to do what? To deliver the service. By the end of this conference, let's touch our consciousness. Let's be aroused from deep our minds on the small things that we can do. The, the openers that we can put on table to make a contribution toward service delivery. And I was happy that the word in the theme is enhanced, meaning something is already there. Not so. Something is not there. I mean, it's already there. You can as we are not dead. There is a service, what? Delivery. It is there. The roads are there. We managed to drive all of us to this place from our different places. Because there were some, some things like roads. Yes. In Kampala, there are former roads, but we still drive on them. Yes. They, they are former roads. If you drive through Bugorovi, there is a former road. But we drive over it. And life goes on. So for whom is it well? Professional accountants, what do you observe? Please observe your professionalism. I'm happy you are 
your uh, profession is very well, you know, moderated, looked after. And now every student, those who ask me, they say, do I do CPA after my BBA or after my MBA? I say, please do it. MBA and CPA are different. The other one is professional. Here we have told you to be a good what? Manager. Do that one is professional. And I'm up about that. So observe your professionalism. Please be ethical in doing the small things. Uganda is this corruption, you know, most around. And I, I, again, I read it. I, I have mentioned many times. I don't want to, to give the name of your, of your fellow certified public accountant in Rosera now, the one from, P, uh, from OPM. To me, the problem was, was management. I said the problem was management. So what does that bring me to? It brings me to behavioral aspects of your profession. Behavioral aspects of your profession. They are the principles from international standards. I know you observe them. Very happy. Auditors do their work. They declare all your reports as passing. But there are some behavioral aspects that I wish to remind you to to observe behavioral. I also want to mention the issue of feed forward systems. Feed, we are used to feedback. But uh, as professionals in this discipline, let's institute feed forward systems. I think one of the feed forward systems that uh, was instituted is pre, pre audit. Before payments are done, internal audit does their thing. Uh, many people called about it from general aspects. Many of you were part of the implementation, possibly, or the introduction of that policy and government that payments should be pre. Many people are saying, ah, internal audit is delaying what? Our money. Internal audit, internal audit. But I think it's a good practice. As a student of management, that is a feed forward system. You don't wait for the bulb to blow. You observe that that bulb will blow and they make preventive mechanism. But importantly, speakers before me mentioned it, the issue of mindset change. Mindset change. I think that's where we need to, individually, from each one of our hearts, let's do that. And I wish to give one or two action points. I have emphasized the issue of addressing behavioral aspects of public Finance. The second one which I want to emphasize as an action point is to catalyze management as a practice. As a student of management, I continue advocating for better management practices. Simple things of communication. Simple things of opening that gate for students to enter. Simple things of reading documents of being in time, simple things of, of, of being in the shoes of others, those many small management practices. Let's catalyze them, let's enhance them, we shall enhance service delivery. Service delivery is a monster, something big, but it can be achieved through those small things I have, I have mentioned. And so we shall need to appreciate policy, because policy guides us, but then, under policy, I suggest that policy should be realigned. We have many policies in Uganda that are good, but they are not aligned to reality. We may not change policy, because most of the policies might be above us. But for us, we have two words which you can do, two action words. One, to realign. Realigning a policy does not mean you have changed the what? A policy. But you're realigning a policy to deliver what? A service. The other word is to co-align, to make in two. So as practitioners, let's realign, let's co-align. While our bosses are making the what? The policies. Let the policies come down to you and me and we realign, we co-align. Some people have said, as I come towards the end, that let's run, let's run government as a business. 
You have heard of that. Just run government as a what? As a business. And for you, all of you here, being from the business background, you know what that means. Others who have not studied business start quarreling. How do you run government as a business? It's not a profit making. No, business is not about what? Profit motivation. So I want to emphasize from your professional point of view, from my insights as a student of management, that let's run government as a business. But I'm putting the word business in quotes. When you get this paper, please maintain the quotes. That let's run government as a what? A business. You and me, who are of business background, know what it means to be a business. We know the business model canvas. The business model canvas is a simple template. It's a simple blueprint of how you do things to survive in a business. What are those things government should do to survive as a state, as a nation? Some of them we are not doing. And you and me, we have already agreed. We are part of those quarreling. We are also supposed to be, we are also part of those who are supposed to what? To deliver the service. Allow me, uh, my brother Derek, to give three action points as your takeaway. Some of these you are already doing from my interaction with you many times. And you mentioned it. Continuous professional development. Do what it takes, dear accountants, to enhance professional, continuous professional development. I'm very happy about it, and it's my action point. One of the things you should enhance in order for us to enhance service delivery. Train them. Call them. Bring us together in conferences so that there is professional development. It's very, very important. It's very critical. The second one, interfaces. Create interfaces between the private sector, private pu public finance, and private finance. Those are two technical words which are uh, common in your language. Because we are talking about public finance for service delivery, but you are also aware that there is private finance, in quotes also, because it's not commonly used in our ordinary English, where the, the private sector is a key player. And the NDP3 puts it right. Our industrialization strategy, our development, was to put the private sector as a key player. But go to the private sector, you will hear them quarreling. One of them, the policies are not... Uh, some last year or the other year, I was talking to the professional engineers in the association. They were quarreling that the policies do not favor them to compete. And there is a policy on local content. But when you read it, it does not local content us to participate. So uh, th this is where the issues are. And please, ICPAU, I think this is where you can advocate strongly because you are listened to as people who really mind about the public finance, its management, right from the Auditor General, the Accountant General, uh, plus, of course, uh, Secretary to the Treasury, and the rest of us down. In MUBS, I'm called a sub-accountant, a sub-accounting officer. I don't know if that is the right word. The principal says, you deans, where you are, you, you look after public money. And so you are sub-accountant, sub-accounting officers. So from the secretary to Tesla, to me, the sub-accountant, whether it is right or not, we need to do a lot to enhance the public-private interaction. And I'm sure SPU can do that in terms of their money. The next one, uh, second last, is segmentation of defects of service delivery. Segmentation of service of defects of service delivery. We, we are crying that there is poor service delivery. But what are we saying? You know, we are in academics, we raise some of those questions. If you are saying there is service delivery, poor service delivery, what do you mean? What are you saying? Can we segment them? Can, we, can they become part of some of audit reports? Can they become part of the management letters at the public level? 
that this is it, that the service delivery is this and this. And for the colleagues here who also do some academics, it is the issue of measurement. Service delivery, their friends, is not measured well. And in academics we say, that which cannot be measured, I will add the word well, cannot be studied well. Many of my students have topics. Service delivery in Kanungu district. Service delivery in Kampala City Council. Service delivery. But what are they talking about? They talk about roads, that the road projects have delayed. What has actually delayed? Is it the road project? There must be something that has delayed. And one of them is that thing which takes my three what? Seconds. How many of you have delayed that thing and therefore we are running on former roads? It's possible. So let's redefine and segment service delivery because as accountants, you report on these things. And so you are, you are well stationed. The last one, dear colleagues, the new curriculum. We are aware, many of you can attest that you don't understand the reports of your children these days. They bring things. Now they have one up to three. Now in the village when I went, the parents said, what does this mean? The child said he's in one, meaning he's number one. When he three is the, the highest. That mommy, you see, I'm one. When the, his skills, when you read the detail, his skills and learning ability is still very low. So he's grouped one. But you and me do not understand it yet. Now the question which I posed as I was finalizing this is how is the, the accounting fraternity preparing the accountants who will come with those skills that are in the new curriculum. Let's not sit as a giant far from us. They are now in senior four. They will soon do some senior five, six, and they will come to institutions and they will become accountants. Very different from our thinking. They may not be the accountants I, I used to teach, 1996, but they will be a, a different crop. And so let's prepare for them and start engaging the academia, the ministry, to understand how your profession will be influenced by that new crop of Ugandan professionals. Dear friends, public finance, enhance, enhancement of service delivery is your role, is mine. We do have contextual factors that might be limiting us, but we also have the ability to change and improve several of them. I thank you for this conversion, and I do hope that it will come out with very critical recommendations that can improve the opening of the gate for the students to enter and make a revision on a public holiday. I thank you. Let's appreciate Hada as some of you wake up. Uh, professor, thank you for that uh, excellent presentation. I believe uh, there will be a lot to say. Uh, professor, you noticed something. Uh, you asked about your P4 class of 1979. Uh, the ladies were a bit hesitant because many of them had entered that as their year of birth. <laughs> but their ladies, we, we have forgiven them. But we know, Professor's classmates, you're here. I also noticed that... Uh, all the space behind the assistant auditor general is empty. I think it's a, a repellent. Next time you'll sit at the back. I don't know which people are avoiding the auditor general, but we shall pray for you. And on that note, I think our session has ended, and I would like to hand back to the master of ceremony to introduce uh, our next presenter. As our chairman, don't look at me, engineer. Yeah, David, you can do a little walking. Uh, David gave me a company earlier. I'm actually company secretary at uh, UK, uh, Uganda Limited, makers of Sleeping Baby, not Sleeping Beauty. Yeah, just some clarity. Thank you. Thank you for the job. Uh, Applause to 
the company yeah. secretary of sleeping <laughs> sleeping beauty thank you for conducting us uh, uh, this uh, session and as you see you have other duties to do i don't know what you are running to you seem to be in a hurry to get off uh, Okay, <laughs> okay, uh, Professor, you are our cousin. You said you were an accountant at some time. By then, I think the law had not been passed. You could be called an accountant. As of today, you may face consequences if you say you're an accountant without the letters directly behind you. So, uh, your chair has something to offer you still. Yeah, Professor, forget about the next topic on ethics. This present is uh, around 20,000. I know gifts are a tricky issue with ethics, but uh, this is our humble appreciation for your wonderful presentation. <laughs>